there's been a lot of interest in 60 inch corn. And I, I think initially for me, the question was, you know, how much yield being lost or how much does a farmer give up when they go to 60 inch corn? We basically have two uh, plant populations, the 64,000, which would represent the same within row spacing as the 30-inch uh, row crop. And then we've got 32,000, which would represent half the population if you grew it in a 30-inch spacing. So that's one of the questions we want to answer with this research. Obviously, the new hybrids that we're producing these days are able to tolerate uh, higher populations better than the old days. But, you know, we're still concerned about standability. First of all, we want to plant the cover crops as late as we can when we can still get equipment in. So we're going to plant around the V6, uh, V7 stage. And that means that we're planting in the middle of the heat of the summer, so to speak. And, and so uh, I think we felt like we needed to put in some warm season crops primarily. We've kind of focused on in this trial cowpea. As you can see, a lot of cowpea, it becomes a dominant. I think there were 10 pounds per acre of cowpea. We put in some buckwheat. I think buckwheat tolerates the heat pretty well. We have some millet, and of course millet's a grass, but it would be a warm season grass. And then everyone likes radish, so we stuck some radish in there. You know, some people that uh, would like to have a nitrogen source uh, in their mix, uh, I think cowpea was a, is a good example of a warm season crop that is likely to grow and, and we, we, we chose one that's not likely to produce seeds so we won't have volunteers to worry about and uh, hopefully that'll fix some nitrogen and be useful in the system in the future. We basically had enough moisture in the soil to get them germinated and we've had good rainfall thereafter. I think moisture during the season is always a concern when you're kind of intercropping because corn is a heavy water user. I mean, it's a very efficient water user, but it likes to use a lot of water. And if you're sucking water out of the soil and you're not getting it replenished, then your cover crops are not gonna have access to it either. So this year, I think has been quite, uh, quite favorable for the establishment of cover crops. And as you can see, we, we've had some really decent biomass as a result.